I was thinking about the MCU the other day and how watching an MCU movie has started to feel like homework to me because now you have like 30 movies and like 15 Disney Plus shows and you don't know what is going to get referred in what upcoming movie. So if you compare that to something like Ahsoka, which is the new Star Wars show, and that is building up storylines from like Clone Wars and Rebels, which are two animated shows with a combined total of about 200 plus episodes. So the question that comes up is, if you're someone like me who hasn't watched Clone Wars or Rebels, then can you still watch or understand Ahsoka? And the answer to that question will be given right after this message from our sponsor. Man, I'm kidding. <laughs> I've got 59 subscribers. I don't have sponsors. <laughs> okay, so coming back to the question, which is, can you watch Ahsoka or can you understand Ahsoka if you haven't seen uh, Star Wars, uh, Clone Wars or Rebels? And the answer is yes, but with a lot of caveats. There are a few uh, provisos, a, a couple of quid pro quo. This is one of those shows that should come with an asterisk which says like terms and conditions apply. So I'm going to try and uh, do a bit of a recap of the first three episodes, not in too much detail, but so that I can kind of explain what works for me and what doesn't work for me. Okay, so uh, the first episode starts off with a traditional sort of Star Wars scroll, uh, which talks about like the Empire has fallen and the New Republic has taken its place. And then it mentions Grand Admiral Thrawn, for which from what I can gather, he's supposed to be the main villain in Rebels. I don't know if he's in Clone Wars, but I am sure that he's the main villain in Rebels. And it talks about like how like Grand Admiral Thrawn was banished or disappeared at the end of the war, but there are still some Imperial loyalists who are trying to find him to bring him back and sort of restart the war and or reestablish the empire. And then it goes into like Ahsoka has managed to capture one such Imperial loyalist by the name of Elspeth Morgan, and she is now being transported. Uh, on a New Republic prison ship, so back to the New Republic. And then the camera sort of pulls out and you see the prison ship in space. And then another smaller ship starts to approach and the captain is like, you know, uh, identify yourself. And they send their, uh, you know, identification codes and his junior officer like, Captain, they're Jedi. And the captain is like, bullshit, like there are no Jedi left anymore. He says like, you know what? Let them come on board. I'm pretty sure, you know, they're not Jedi. We'll call their bluff, which is a bad move. So that is, uh, that is the entry of our uh, first two villains of the trio. So there's uh, Ray Stevenson playing Balin Skoll and there's Ivana Sh Sakno playing Shin Hati. So the only thing I'm not sure of is, I don't know if they are ex-Jedi who turn mercenary or they are Sith Lords but as sort of Ray Stevenson says in, in a dialogue in the show We are no Jedi And then they both sort of proceed to kind of massacre the entire ship which is a great scene like the show starts off really well especially like, uh, like Ray Stevenson is massive or was sadly he passed away a few weeks ago but he does a great job because he's like huge and he's very sort of poised and uh, elegant in his movements. And then on the other side, you have like Shin Hati and she's like wild, you know? So she has like these two looks. She's either, she's got like this wild eyed look in her eyes where it looks like she's going to go on like a homicidal rampage or she's got this deer caught in headlights kind of a look. But she always seems kind of unhinged. So they both are fantastic. And then uh, Ray Stevens or like Balin Skoll reaches the prison cell where Elspeth Morgan is being kept. Balin, you are true to your word. And uh, this is where I had to sort of, my memory took a while to come in because uh, it took me an episode and a half to remember who Elspeth Morgan was. Because the show only says like, you know, uh, Ahsoka Tano has captured an Imperial Loyalist and 
then i had to remember i kind of like in the second episode i said like asoka tano first showed up in live action in like mandalorian season 2 in like one episode and she is there to f- fight or capture somebody as like is this the same woman and it turns out it is the same woman except that mandalorian season 2 happened like 2020 so it's been 3 years i don't remember that far back it's been 84 years <laughs> so yeah so like there's stuff like that which the show kind of assumes that you watched everything so they don't feel the need to really explain anything which is okay in a way that even if you don't remember that stuff or you haven't seen it you just kind of go like okay you know, she's one of the bad guys but yeah the three of them together are excellent like they for me they are like the center of the show the other good thing is that they are in every single episode okay so unlike like if you look at mandalorian then you just had like you have moff gideon but he's only in like a couple of episodes in two seasons right like he's in the final episode of season 1 and then like a couple of episodes in season 2 but here you get like these three villains and they are there in every single episode so you get so you get to sort of enjoy their evilness okay so then we move on to uh, like asoka tano and she's on some planet which is another issue for me is like they're not really there's no title card which tells you which planet she's on you know like i wouldn't mind a title card like i don't know everything about star wars So she's on this planet, and uh, she's trying to find like this map or something that will lead them to Thrawn. Okay, and she finds this map, which is like this really ornate orb, which also uh, okay. This is a nitpick, okay, but it also didn't make sense to me because I'm like, okay, so Thrawn went missing at the end of the war, okay, and. My assumption is the war got over maybe five six years ago, maximum ten, but this map looks like it's hundreds of years old. So how does a hundreds of year old map hold the location of Thrawn who went missing like five or six years ago? No idea. But yeah, I, as I said, it's a nitpick. I just kind of go with it. Okay, so then she shows up. She got. She gets the map, and she goes to like a New Republic ship where we meet Mary Elizabeth, where we meet Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who plays Hera Syndulla. Again, I'm guessing she's another character from Rebels. Again, the show doesn't introduce you to anyone. They just they meet and they start talking. It feels like you're randomly watching like one episode from like season seven of Grey's Anatomy. and you have no idea who these characters are you know they know each other and the show is like hey man this is season 7 we're not going to reintroduce everyone so yeah you're just supposed to sort of like go with the flow and then she says like oh you know you need to solve this map because we can't open it uh why don't you go meet sabine ren and i'm like i have no idea who sabine ren is so then we cut to another planet and we get to meet clancy brown who is playing general uh, sorry governor azadi i was like I was reading the subtitles and it said A Z A D I. I was like, his name is Azadi, because Azadi is like a Hindi slash Urdu word. Uh, it's also like because I, was, I kind of just did a search. Uh, it's also a word in in like eight or nine other Middle Eastern languages, and it means freedom. <laughs> so his name is Governor Freedom, which is kind of amusing. But uh, yeah, so uh, there's Governor uh, Azadi who is. you know uh, this there's supposed to be celebrations going on for their victory over the empire and he he starts off his speech is like you know several years ago several years ago the empire was defeated thanks to the heroic efforts of commander Ezra Bridger who sacrificed himself to liberate our world and i'm like i have no idea who Ezra Bridger is and then it sort of does this slow zoom on like a mural which is supposed to be characters from Star Wars Rebels and I'm like I can recognize Ahsoka Tano and Hera because I just saw them but everyone else is like a complete mystery to me and then general freedom oh, sorry governor freedom is like uh, here is one of the rebel leader Sabine Wren and she's going to give you she's going to say some words but Sabine Wren is like fuck this shit so she's gone Stand down, Commander. 
and like she's on a speeder and that scene is kind of pointless but then eventually asoka shows up on the planet with the map and so she's like i can't solve this map i need your help but they're not sort of getting along uh, again it's not explained but from what i could gather is sabine ren was supposed to be asoka's apprentice but sabine doesn't seem to be for sensitive like they haven't displayed anything in the first three episodes that she is for sensitive so how is she uh, asoka's apprentice i have no idea but anyway she's like okay i'll you know i'll help you whatever so that's where my problems come in with the show before i get to the positives so the problems are firstly uh the central characters are kind of boring for me like i'm very sure they must be more exciting on the animated shows because the animated shows had like 200 episodes to build up these characters but they're not translating that personality over to live action uh it's just not working like uh, rosario dawson plays asoka like as really stoic just that and then sabine ren is kind of mopey most of the time there's the droid uh, hu yang who is voiced by david tennant and he's supposed to be funny but it sometimes works and sometimes it doesn't What happens if you get the power levels wrong? The head will explode. Perhaps we should perform this operation somewhere else. I say go for it. Because you're a hologram. So the central characters are really not interesting to me. Also, the dialogues aren't particularly great. So which also brings in another issue which is uh the storyline or they don't have enough plot. The first episode is about 50 minutes not counting the 5 minutes of credits. Okay, so it doesn't need to be 50 minutes. There is that the whole scene with Sabine Ren on her speeder is kind of pointless. The and then she's off she goes to her home where she's staying and you get this whole scene of where she's listening to Ezra Bridger who sent her a message or whatever. All of that stuff I'm very sure like if you've seen uh rebels then all of that stuff makes sense to you but to me it was just like can we move on this is i'm not emotionally invested in this stuff uh and the show isn't doing anything to get me emotionally invested the show just goes with the whole idea that hey you've already seen rebels all of this works for you and i'm like i haven't seen rebels you know i haven't seen clone wars so this is not working for me and because of that like most of their dialogue scenes uh because the writing is very average the dialogue scenes don't really pop the characters don't have any kind of the heroes don't have any kind of great personality to them so the dialogue scenes don't work when the plot kicks in it's fine you know but i think for like every episode they only have about 20 minutes worth of plot like this is an episode of an animated show like if you look at animated shows they're like 21 22 minutes which is great and this very much feels like this should be an episode of an animated show but it's a live action show so for some reason they're like you know it has to be like 35 40 minutes long so the second episode is like again it's like 35 minutes the third episode is 30 minutes the third episode you spend the first 5 minutes uh in like a sparring session where asoka is trying to teach sabine ren how to use a lightsaber it reminded me of uh the scene where obi-wan is trying to teach luke skywalker on the millennium falcon in like the first in like a new hope it reminded me of that but not as good you know so you go like this is a 30 minute episode you wasted 5 minutes on like a sparring session so i'm very sure it will play in later because there is a fight scene between her and shin hati where Shin Hardy just beats the ever loving crap out of Sabine Ren. So I'm very sure there's going to be like yeah, you know, we'll come back to that and there will be a rematch which Sabine will probably win. She'll have to win. But uh yeah, like the scene itself is not exciting enough. 
So all of that stuff is not working for me. Like the central characters don't work, the dialogues don't work, the slower scenes don't work. What works is uh, the villains are great. You know, so all three of them, like Elizabeth Morgan, Balin Skoll, Shin Hati. There's a fourth guy called Maroc, but you don't, you never see his face. He's wearing like this big helmet on his face, so you never see him. But uh, he gets this cool fight scene with Ahsoka at the end of episode two. So they are great. Like whenever they are on screen, you can really enjoy the show. The other thing I liked is the plot is nice, but they're also doing a fair bit of interesting world building, uh, which... Uh, a lot of stuff is new to me from a Star Wars standpoint because my knowledge of Star Wars is just the movies, like not much beyond that. I've seen Mandalorian, but I haven't seen anything else. So uh, you get a lot of interesting things. Like in the first episode, when they reach to this place, which is like in ruins, and Elizabeth Morgan mentions something called the Witches of Dathmir, who are supposed to be like these force wielders who do magic. And like, I have no idea Star Wars and witches. So that stuff is interesting. There are, uh, there are mentions of an ancient alien race which had come from another galaxy. Like in episode two, when they, when they finally open up the map, you're in like this druid circle kind of a place. And Elizabeth Morgan says like, this was built by like ancient aliens <laughs> from another galaxy. And, uh, so that stuff is is cool. Uh, and then uh, we finally get to see something new, which is, uh, if you've seen Mandalorian season three, then there is a shot in the first episode where they're in hyperspace and Baby Yoda looks out of the cockpit and you see these big tentacle, like these, you, you see like a distorted image of these big tentacle floating creatures out in space and turns out that they're called Purgil and they're like giant space whales but they can actually travel in hyperspace so you get to see them at the end of episode 3 which is pretty cool and they also mention something like uh, like Hu Yang mentions that in the Jedi uh, uh, library there are there are mentions of like giant uh, hyperspace gateways that they had built like a long time ago uh, which would allow people to travel from one galaxy to another and they were built on the migratory paths of the space whales. So all of that stuff is interesting to me. You know, like the villains are interesting, this world building, the basic core plot is fine. You know, like you have to find the bad guy, you have to stop the bad guy. That stuff is great they really need to sort of pump up the dialogue for the heroes because there isn't much that these actors can do with it. Like, I can't blame Rosario Dawson or anyone because the dialogue really isn't great. So yeah, so I hope that improves with the coming episodes. But even where it is right now, I'll probably keep watching it. It's only eight episodes. I think it would have been a lot better if it was, if it was just like shrunk down to like three episodes and do like a three hour mini series. And I think that would have been like really great and compact, but I think they want to drag it out to like eight episodes. So yeah, it feels stretched out. Yeah, so I think once I won't review any other episodes uh, immediately, what I'll do is I'll just watch the whole thing. I think it ends in the first week of October. So once the whole thing is done, then I'll just review, you know, all the remaining five episodes together. Okay, so uh, yeah, if you've watched Clone Wars and Rebels, I think this will be great for you. If you haven't, it's fine. Yeah, uh, yeah that's pretty much it. I'll see you whenever I review the next film or TV show.